I've been getting these emails saying that, you know, it's not my position to judge anybody. And I want to make it quite clear that I didn't judge him. You know, I know God is the only judge we have. I've just set the appointment up. So, I don't feel bad for what I did, you know. I feel bad for maybe the families, his family or something. Okay, my name is Sergeant Trofeter. Today's date, 1029. The time is now 20 minutes after 9 a.m. Interview with prisoner Sanderson, is it? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and explain to me basically what you told the staff when you came out of the cell. Um, you know, what Bunky was talking about his crime, what he was in prison for, raping children. Uh, I didn't appreciate it, so I killed him. Plain and simple. About what time did this occur? Mm -hmm. Late at night, you know, probably about, uh, I don't know, in between uh, 12, to 11. Where can I maybe 12 and 2, but, more, more closer to 12. Okay, you got any details you care to add? I mean... No, I just did, did what I thought was right, you know, that's it. Okay, did you knock him out, choke him out kind of a deal? Yep. Is that what it was? Yep, I, uh, I hit him in his face and then when he uh, fell out, I took his shoelaces out of his shoes and tied him around his neck and... So he was unconscious at the time. Did yeah. you use any anything to strike him with, or just hit him with your fist? Just my fist. Okay. Okay. Well, they're probably going to keep you over here for in this in this cell for a little bit. We're going to get you into an observation cell over on the other side. An observation cell? I'm not suicidal. No, no, no. It's what we got available. Oh, okay. All okay. Right. So yeah. all I want you to do here is just kind of kick back and chill for a little bit. And we'll get this wrapped up. Yeah, all right. Problem with you guys. All right. That's cool. As all long right. as you're being compliant, we're good to go. Yeah. All right. Have all a right. seat. Thank you. All right. All right. And my partner here is Thank you, Sergeant Pat Darrow. All right. We'd like to talk to you a little bit about an incident that happened last night. Mm hmm Okay. Do um, you go by Steve, Stephen? Doesn't matter. Okay. Would be comfortable if I call you Steve? It's fine. Okay. Steve, just because of the nature of the, the incident last night, I have to afford you your, your rights. I have right. to look out for your, your well-being. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read you your Miranda rights. Right. Okay. You have the right to remain silent. Do you understand that? Yep. Okay. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Understand that? Yes. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you before or during any kind of questioning. Do you understand that? Yes. If you want a lawyer but cannot afford one, one will be appointed to represent you at public expense. You understand that? Yes. You have the right to remain silent, and if you later wish to stop answering questions, the questioning will stop. You understand that? Yes. You have the right to have a lawyer present, and later change your mind, the questioning will stop and you've talked to a lawyer. Again, do you understand? Yes. Okay. Do you understand each of these rights that I just explained to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you willing to give up these rights and answer my questions at this time? Sure, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, today is um, Wednesday, the 29th mm -hmm. of uh, uh, October. Yes. And it's currently about 11, probably 53. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I say, we're investigating an incident that happened last night that you were involved in. Yeah. Why don't you just go ahead and tell us what happened? All right. Um, I had been locking with Ted for about, I don't know, about two months. Um, never asked him what his crime was. Never really cared. We got along okay. Uh, never had any really problems. And then, like, um, two days ago, somebody had said that he was in prison for CSC. So I asked him about it, and he kind of never answered me. Then last night, about about nine o'clock at night, um, I guess he decided to clear his conscience or something. But you know, he told me what he was in prison for—that he had, you know, was accused of raping a, an eleven-year-old girl, and he got twenty-five to life for it. And you know, I told him that's enough. I don't want to hear any more. Mm -hmm. But he just, for some reason, kept talking and kept talking, and then. I really don't have any patience for that kind of thing. I asked him three or four times to just let it go. I don't want to hear about it. He didn't, so about, I don't know, 
11 or 12 o'clock, somewhere around there. Um, I first, you know, punched him a couple times. Still wouldn't shut up. Still kept telling me he wanted to explain that he didn't do it, that he was being set up and all this stuff. And I don't know, I just got mad and then hit him and, and then I killed him. When I knocked, I hit him and knocked him out, and then I took the shoelaces out of his shoes, tied them together, wrapped it around his neck, and strangled him. Then, um, after I was done, I mean, I was I was aware of what I was doing, you know. And then I just put him on his bed and covered him up and climbed in my bed and went to sleep. And how did this come to the point of being uh, reported? How did the staff become aware? Um, well, I mean, I was going to do it that night, say something to the officers making the round, but I don't know, I was kind of tired and I didn't want to have to go through all the BS, so I figured I'd wait till the morning shift came in, because I got along better with a few of the officers there, so, you know, that's what I did. I waited till the morning shift, and the first time that they came on, they, they broke our doors for chow, and I went down and told Mr. Pruitt what I had done, and... He put me in the room, and then here I am. Okay. Now, evidently you and Ted yeah. have been bunkies for several months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you had any other kind of disagreements? None. You got along good? He was a good bunkie? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You've been in the system for a, a while. Most of my life. Okay. Um, Obviously, you've had bunkies that were not good. No, it, actually, he's like my first bunkie. Okay. Okay. I've never, you know, I've, I've <clears throat> made it clear that I didn't like locking with okay. bunkies. So usually in the past, they kind of kept me to a cell by myself. Okay. So. So this is this was kind of a new experience for you having a bunkie. Yeah. And in your opinion, it was going okay? Sure, yeah. Okay. And then, for whatever reason, Ted felt it was necessary to, to clear his heart, and you, yeah. you happened to be the pair of years that he decided to, to confess to or try to clear his mind. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so, he keeps going on about his his personal business, what brought him there, what he did, you know, like you say, he's alleging that it didn't happen, it's yeah. framed and all of that. I mean, and I'm, I'm sure that having been in this system as long as you have, you hear that all the time. You know, and I, I yeah. guess I'm kind of a firm believer that if you're here and you've gone through the legal system, it's been proven beyond a, a reasonable doubt that the crime was committed and you're here. Yes, and, and mm -hmm. I also know that, you know, getting 25 years for something like that, it must have been extremely bad. Right. Because most of the time, people with CSC get really easy cases. You guys know that, right. you know? So. There's no, no reason for us to talk about it. I was going to try to get moved tomorrow, because like I said, I had heard about it. And, you know, if I don't see it, I don't believe it. You know, because everybody spreads rumors about everybody else in prison. Right. So, but I confronted him about it, and at first he said no. Then I left it at that. Okay. Then, like I said last night, he just, I don't know, out of the blue said he wanted to talk to me and, you know, told me everything. You know, I got 25 to life, uh, 11 years old, uh, just a bunch Things of... Things that you just didn't want to hear it. Yeah. And I kept asking him, you know, I don't want to hear it. And then it just, I don't know, it just seemed to irritate me more and more. Even when he didn't say anything, I think him denying it is what irritated me the most. Okay. Now, you'd mentioned that you punched him a couple of times. Yeah. Where did you strike him at? Just in the jaw. Okay. You know, he's a little bit bigger than me, so, you know, he was talking about he had all this military background, and okay. so, you know... Mm -hmm. I was a little intimidated, but... Okay. Okay. Did you injure yourself? Do you have any kind of marks on your hands mm -hmm. from Not it? really. Okay. So you struck him in the face area? Yeah. Okay. Well, did you see if there was any kind of injury? Did, mm -hmm. did you give him a fat lip, a black eye, you know, nosebleed? I didn't really pay attention. Okay. But that didn't seem to stop him from continuing on? No, it just, I mean... 
at that point, he just became kind of. I don't know if you. I mean, I don't know if you'd say passive, but he just started trying to explain more that you know what had happened or what it didn't happen. And the more he just tried to explain himself out of it, the more mad I got. And I would have thought that you getting physical, punching him, he would have probably gotten the idea that you really didn't want to talk about this. Yeah. And he continued. Yeah, he continued. Okay. How many times do you think that you punched him? Maybe once, twice, nothing Once more. or twice? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then at some point, evidently, you, you hit him hard enough to knock him down or knock mm -hmm. him out. Where do you think that you struck him that time? Mm -hmm. Probably caught him on a good shot on the chin. On the chin. Okay. So he, he went down and now he's on the floor. Mm -hmm. Do you recall how he was laying on the floor, side, back, no. face up, no. face down? Mm -hmm. I don't recall. Okay. And then you said that you, you choked him, choked him out. I believe is that, that no I didn't choke him out when he went when he down I took the shoelaces out of his shoes okay and I made a decision that this was gonna end now this, so okay okay so I, I guess then I, I must have just misunderstood you I thought you said that after you punched him he was down that you choked him prior to using the shoelaces no I just took the okay. shoelaces out and, okay. and they, them they were out of his shoes mm -hmm. okay so he took the shoelaces out um, Obviously, you wrapped him around his neck. Mm -hmm. Just once. Just wrapped around around my hands. Tied them two together. Okay. There were two shoelaces, so two I shoe tied the ends to ends together. Okay. Wrapped it around a hand, put it around his neck, and held it. Okay. How, how long do you think you had to hold it before you were confident that he was... Actually, actually a long time. Long time being minute, two minutes, five minutes? I don't know, but it just seemed like a long time. Okay. I imagine that probably your time recollection then would probably not be accurate or because I, I'm sure well, that you would like probably, a long time. you know, a little, little tense, a little hyped, had, had the adrenaline going. So you would end up, you're confident that he is now deceased. You pick yeah. him up and you said you put him back in his bunk. Put him in the bed and face him towards the wall so that it looked like he was sleeping. So he was sleeping. Covered him up. Covered him up. Okay. Um, do you recall what he was wearing? Uh, not really. Um, it was around bedtime, so either probably, probably long johns and a t-shirt. That's usually what we sleep in. So okay, or pajamas. Might have been. I don't, you know, particularly remember. Now, if you can recall, like what time do you think this happened? I don't know. It wasn't that late. I don't. At first, I thought it was around two, but now the the more I thought about it, earlier I said like two, right? Okay. But then the more I thought about it, it was it was probably like around I don't know. I know it was past ten because they had made their last their first round uh, third shift. They being the third shift. Yeah, so I know it was there. So I don't know between ten and twelve, somewhere around there. Okay. Now it's my understanding that at two they go through and do the count. Mm -hmm. How how elaborate is the count? What, what what did they do? Do they open the cell, poke you, say, hey, how are you doing? No, they just look in and walk by, turn on the count light, look in and walk by. Okay. Do you remember that occurring? Mm -hmm. Or were you sleeping? No, I remember it. I was up. Okay. And by this time, Ted was already deceased. Yeah, he was dead. He was dead. Okay. So... You mentioned that, you know, you realized that if you were to have called the staff right then, we're going to start, we're, we're going to swap that beehive. Yeah. So you made the determination to... Wait till the morning. Wait till the morning. Sleep. Okay. I noticed, you know, we, obviously we've been in, in your cell, mm -hmm. that it appears that all of your belongings you packed, packed up. up. Yep. Okay. When did you do that? Mm, right after I knew he was dead. Right after you knew. So, and the reason for doing that would be because when you go to the hole, that's usually what the police do to pack it up. And I figured, yeah, they're going to tear my shit up. So, okay, let me just do it myself. So, so you, ultimately, you knew that there were some rough times coming for you here because you were probably going to be moved out of that cell, segregation, or or yeah. wherever. Okay. Yeah. So you packed up your belongings. Um, went to sleep that night. Mm-hmm. We got up. Um, what what time did they do breakfast, Chow? 
know, early in the morning, like a little after between six and seven. Six and seven. Yeah. So shift change at six. So between six and seven. Six and seven. So you were allowed out of your cell. Yeah. In fact, I woke up right when they opened my door. Okay. And you got up and you went to chow. Yes, I walked down to the chow hall. I went in, um, said my goodbyes to a few people, and then went to Officer Pruitt and told him that I killed my bunkie. And he kind of laughed, and because I didn't have, I never had any problems with anybody. All right. So I guess he thought I was playing or something. And then I said, "Well, no, I'm serious." And then he put me in that room. Okay. Now. It, it, would it be unusual or would the staff think it odd that Ted didn't get up for breakfast? Not really. Not really. A lot of people, you know, he usually goes to breakfast every morning. So, I, I mean, got to remember that, that I'm on a rock that, let me see, what, what is it? Kind of like, kind of like the troublemaker's rock. Okay. So people are always yelling a lot at night, and you know what I'm saying. So sometimes, you know, he's missed one or two times before. But it wouldn't be something that, in your opinion, would alarm the staff to have them come and no. find out why Ted didn't come to breakfast. No. So they wouldn't have, on their own, found him until probably later. Well, I mean, no, I think they probably would have noticed that he wasn't up and about. Okay. So, because because morning shifts pretty, you know, when they take their counts, they got to see movement. So okay. So when when they do their count, they would have, have realized yeah, they want they want movement. Okay. And you you were aware of that. I mean, yeah. you know that it wasn't like you were gonna be able to to keep him hidden. Nope. You know. So you came right out, walked up to Mr. Pruitt, announced to him, "I killed my bunkie." Yep. And at first, obviously, I think that you know, most anybody would look at you and say, yeah, right. Yeah. But you were persistent enough that he then did what? what did I, I told him, you know, I really did this. And he looked at me and he said, okay, well, I'm going to have to put you in this cell. He put me in the observation cell. And then um, he went to the bubble and said something. Then he went and checked. And then they locked the unit down. Okay. Now, it's my understanding that at some point, you gave somebody some shoelaces? Yeah, I was in the observation cell, and I kind of, my shoelaces were in, and I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, man, they're probably going to kick my ass for having these. You know, I didn't want to, sometimes, because an officer just got stabbed here a little while ago, too, so pretty bad. So they're all on edge, you know, so I was <laughs> kind of worried I better take yeah. these out real quick before they think I'm using it on them or something, you know. Okay, but normally you are allowed to have shoelaces. Yes. Yeah. But because you, under the circumstances, you were put in the bubble, or not the bubble, the, the um, observation cell. Yeah. You took your shoelaces out of your shoes. I noticed you yeah. don't do not have shoelaces yeah. now, and those are the shoelaces that you provided to the staff. Yes. What happened to the shoelaces? Lost them down the toilet. Okay. Now those laces came out of Ted's shoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when you were done, you flushed them down the toilet. Mm-hmm. Why would you do that? Because I'm an idiot. I don't know. Just I mean, you know, obviously I don't think right. I'm uh, in prison for most of my life, so my thinking isn't really rational. <coughs> I don't know. I just kind of thought that that was the appropriate thing to do at that time. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I don't know. I just you know. okay. I mean, because like, like you've already said, I mean, you, you knew at this point that Ted was deceased. Oh, um, I knew it. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, I, I guess, here again, not, never having been in that kind of a situation myself, I mean, you know, and I'm sure I'm not going to make judgments as to why you did certain things, but, you know, I don't, I mean, at, I don't at the time you thought, so you thought it was best to flush the shoelaces, and right. that's where they went. Okay. So... Mr. Pruitt checks, says, okay, yep, you know. He, well, I don't know what he did after that. I'm, okay. He's out of my sight. Out of your sight. And then, they, and then they went into lockdown. Right. Okay. Since then, who else have you spoken to that you may have relayed this? Yeah, some clown, some sergeant that wanted to play detective or something. I don't know if you guys know, but okay. he went to asking me a bunch of questions and stuff and 
at first I told him, he asked me what I strangled him with, and I said I braided my pubic hair together, and because he was just being a dick about it, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, I know murdering somebody's not a good thing, but, I mean, Jesus, man, if, yeah. if the things this guy did, he, the things he said he did, yeah. I wouldn't want someone like that on the street again. So, I mean, and obviously, you've been in the system long enough to you know that mm-hmm. something as serious as what you just did mm-hmm. is going to be investigated, but it's not going to be investigated by a sergeant that works on the... On the no, and that's why I just kind of fucking kind threw of anything out there, so you just leave yeah. me alone and, okay. you know. Now, do you know Mr. McLean? Yes, I do. Okay. Did you have a conversation with him? Hmm... Yeah, I'm, I'm briefly. Briefly. Yeah, briefly. And during that conversation, you recall what you related to him? Not really. I just I I told him, man, that I was sorry that I did it, but you know the guy wouldn't shut up, and you know he was you know telling me about his case, and he just wouldn't shut the fuck up, and okay. you know I think I told him that I uh, I like Mr. McLean, so I told him you know that I had punched him and knocked him out and strangled him. Okay. Something of that nature. Something of that nature. Okay. So, you, you just mentioned that you made some reference to that you were sorry. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously now... Sorry I'm for... No, not so. I'm not sorry for killing oh. him. Oh, no. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, no, I was sorry that I caused them problems. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm glad, glad to clarify that. Yeah, no, so, I'm not <clears throat> sorry at all for killing him. Okay. You know, it's my understanding that you, you are serving a life sentence right now for, for homicide. Yeah. Um, here again, I, I guess, so you're hearing her there, the, the details of that. Um, I, I guess my question is, was that the kind of thing that, it, it appears to me that, that what you did was because of the crime that Ted committed? That I, I do what's necessary. Okay. I do what some people won't. I mean, you guys are cops. You arrest people all the time for stuff that you wish you could shoot them in the face. I already know that. I'm not stupid. Okay. You know, I mean, I, I understand. There's, there's crimes that ha- shouldn't be committed. So, you know, I just have... I don't know. I just don't have any empathy for okay. people. So, so, so basically, you, what you did, you, you figure Ted got what he deserved. Ted got what he deserved. I believe that with all my heart. Okay. And like you say, you, you said you were sorry. And it was not sorry for the act of actually oh, killing for Ted, causing but, the officer but, problems. Oh, okay. yeah. For having you guys to come down here and go through yeah. all this bull crap over a piece of shit. So, okay. So, I mean. I, Steve, at this point, obviously, you know that we put together our report. Mm-hmm. It's going to go to uh, the Saginaw County Processing and Attorney. Mm-hmm. Um, he will make a decision if charges will be authorized. Um, you're, you're here for life as it is. And you'll waste everybody's money and time and yeah, make things more difficult for everybody else. Yeah, I know that. But but you're still afforded your rights. I mean, you're afforded you know, the opportunity for a, for a trial, uh, give an explanation of why you did what you did. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't want to put his family through anything. I'm quite sure they didn't do anything. I'm just going to plead guilty and then get it over with, so no sense in wasting people's time. Okay. Did you ever tell anybody else uh, outside of the corrections officers that are here? You said you mm. said goodbye to a couple people. Yeah, just one person. I'm not going to bring his name into it, but one inmate that you know I was good friends with. I told him what I did and want him to understand, you know, because like I said, I, I didn't really bother people. Yeah, you know, I would get into little too. fights here and there, but nothing. You know, I wasn't bothering nobody. It just I told him what I did before I told prove it because I just wanted him to understand why and. You know, I guess everybody knew that he was in here for that, but me. Yeah. Because he said he already knew that, so I was kind of... Is, is that why you're so open with us tonight, is you just want us to understand why, that this is, you know, no, this I is just, a big problem that, with that with this guy? That no, he has. it's just the truth. Right. I mean, if I do something, then I don't know why 
why be ashamed or lie about something I do? I mean, it just makes it more difficult for everybody. A couple times you said that he um, he he kept he was trying to deny his charges with you. Well, yeah, he was saying, well, because it got me mad because he, you know, first off, twenty five to life. They don't give you twenty five to life. Yeah. He said it was his first offense, and then I'm thinking, dude, 25 to life on your first offense? And then he said, well, um, it was just touching. And then, dude, 25 to life, I'm not a fool. You know, that's penetration, that's bad, bad penetration. Well, uh, then he said the mother set him up, and then he said... No, he was just a dick, man. I guess what I'm wondering is if uh, you said that he was denying it, but then also he's going into details with yeah. you about what had occurred. Yeah. So that kind of contradicts what he's what he's yeah. saying. Yeah, right? and and I'm and I'm that's so it's getting you frustrated because you you know that he's lying. Yeah, and I'm and I'm telling him this, you know, and you know he's always been lying uh, crazy shit before, but nothing like this. It was usually just ah, uh, just bragging old man or something, you know. Yeah. I don't know, just... There's no uh, no chance of him harming himself here, killing himself, hanging himself? No, he didn't. I did it. it I did it. Oh. Um, I'm just a little... I think you probably said it, but I'm trying to keep track, and I'm slow at mm -hmm. keeping track. Uh, he, You knocked him out unconscious. Mm -hmm. Was he lying on the floor then? Yeah, I got a good shot on him. <laughs> So there was no struggle or fight while you were choking him? No. He, he was unconscious? Yeah. Well, he's a little bit bigger than me, so I, I had to make sure that... Well, because like I said, the first time when he wouldn't shut up, I think I... You know, maybe once, no more than twice, you know, just kind of hit him. And it wasn't nothing big. You know, I didn't... You know, like, Ugh. Then he wouldn't stop. So then finally I just caught him good. Were you guys both standing up in the in the cell area there by by the lockers or between yeah. the lockers and the table? Yeah, he was trying to intimidate me. Like I said, he's a little bigger than me, so I'm a small guy. So, oh, I, he's like six something. Did he ever hit you? No, oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't let him hit me. So you you hit him a few times, but they were they were quick. Yeah. And then when he fell, did he? Do you you know if he hit his head on anything when he fell or anything? When he fell, do you know what way he was facing or lay, lying? No, I don't remember that. Because uh -uh. you did you go right for the shoelaces at that time? Actually, I just kind of, you know, it just kind of happened fast. But I remember thinking, uh, you know, and then I seen the, the shoes were right, right next to his head. So, so actually, he might have fell because the locker's right here, and the shoes were underneath the locker. So actually, his head was by the locker. So he didn't kind of like, but more, you know what I'm saying? Like, went straight down. Okay. You know, kind of like, and then I seen the shoelaces, and I don't know, I just... When you, when you initially started to uh, have the conflict with him and, and punch him, were you, did you know at that time that you were going to kill this guy? No. When you, when you were laying in bed, did you think about, hey, this guy's not the kind of guy that I like to be around, I'm going to kill him? I don't know if I said I'm going to kill him. Well, I just, that's what I'm wondering. Well, you're trying to determine whether it's premeditated, first degree, or second degree is what you're trying to do. Well, I'm looking to see, yeah, I'm looking to see if you, did you grab the shoelaces after you knocked him out, or did you, uh, did you laying in bed thinking, I can use those shoelaces to tie no, this guy? because I didn't, I wasn't laying in bed between that time. Okay. Well, yeah, that, I mean, that's, that you're right. I mean, you're, you're Because right. I hit him a couple times, and then, like I said, it, it, as soon as it got physical, it, there was no laying back down or anything. Okay. You know, I hit him a couple times, and I pulled the chair back and sat in the chair, and then um, he kind of got up posturing on me. You know, that's kind of like means, you know, he got up like, you know. So I was like, okay, you know, and then I caught him again. And when he went down, I was like, yeah, sucks to be you. And then right at that moment, I was like, yeah, you know. So that's when you decided that you were going to get the shoelaces and strangle them. And you figured it was—it felt like probably a, a while that you had no, to I, I strangle him. When, when he was talking about it, you know, I definitely, in my mind, thinking I should kill him. So, yeah, yeah, because you, you didn't like what he what he did, no. what he was convicted of. No.
Okay. No, so I guess you could mark it down as premeditated. It doesn't really matter. Well, like Gary said, that's not for our determination, but just, we want to know the facts and the timeline and how things work. Mm -hmm. um, we just need you know, to know your, your mindset at the time. I just, you know. So the, the, the shoelaces were happened to be there and they were convenient. So they were convenient. an item of convenience. Yes. It, it wasn't something that, that you had determined prior that I'm going to knock him down, I'm going to take the shoelaces, I'm going to kill him. It just right. It seemed like it was, like, hey, he's knocked out now, there's the shoelaces, and now I'm going to kill him. Well, that's Finish how him. I committed my other murder. Or murder. It was kind of a spur of the moment type No, thing. strangulation. Oh. Okay. I just don't think stabbing or shooting somebody is a little too impersonal. If you're going to kill somebody, you might as well be personal about it, right? You think that's more personal? <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but if you have to go to that extent, yeah. I want it to be personal. I don't, I don't like violence, but if I have to go to that extent, then I want it to be personal. Okay. So, so obviously you... Th you Comparing strangulation to stabbing or shooting, that the strangulation is more personal. Yeah. Obviously, you know, a, a gun, you can shoot somebody from many feet away or whatever. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, it's like war. If you're going to go to war, there's no, no rules. I mean, not in my mind. You're aware, I think you mentioned earlier, that you were going to try to not lock with him anymore. You're yeah, going to bring I, it up. When he first started talking, that's the first thing I did. I told him, shut the fuck up. You know, I'm going to get, one of us is getting moved tomorrow. So that was my initial plan to just go to McLean and say, you know, get this fucker out of here. Because I had been locking with him for two months and I didn't know any of this. Yeah. yeah. Apparently everybody else fucking knew it, but I didn't. And they, you know, failed to tell me anything. So you know it's an option, but then, it, then he just pushed it too far. And yeah, and he just kept going with it. So even though it was an option in the morning to get away from the guy, do you feel that it, you did better by not allowing him the chance to get, or get free and get out on the streets? Not yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Certainly do. Certainly do. I mean, it's my opinion. I don't think something like that. I've been in prison a long time. I've seen people come back and come back and come back. Now, there's too much shit in the world now. We don't need... I mean, my personal opinion is that people like that should, you know, die. Do you see people coming and going from here a lot? They, they get released and the next thing you know they're back in for whatever reason? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this state has no, uh, nothing. The state is nothing. The state just, you know, pushes you out. You know, they don't care what happens to the people out there on the streets. You know, they talk about it all the time, coming back in, about what they're going to do when they get out. You know, not him specifically, but I hear a lot of uh, uh, child molesters and rapists and murderers and crazy fucks always talking about it, you know, what they're going to do when they get back out. You know, I deserve to be in prison. You know, I can't function in society. I already know that. I deserve to be here, and I accept that. <laughs> You've had a pretty good uh, record here as far as not getting in trouble or anything, right? No, I, you know, I mean, pretty it's prison. As much you know, yeah, we're all degenerates in here, so obviously <laughs> something's going to happen, right? You know, I got a few assaults, few possessions of a weapons, never towards staff. Okay. okay. Have you ever had, I'm sorry. No, I'm all set. In, in any other, you said, you know, a couple of assaults, obviously against other inmates. Mm -hmm. Every have any kind of criminal charges come out of those or were those kind of things that were dealt with within the system? Within the system. Okay. So you got, you know, some kind of reprimand through the regular procedures. The regular procedures. Know, segregation, yeah. level five. Okay. Were you always honest and upfront with those as well too? This is what happened, this is why we got in this fight or this is why we did this? Yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is, right? But you're pretty, you have a history of being a, a straightforward guy, essentially. You're, uh, I just, you know. Things happen, you did them, this is what I'm involved in, it's the way it's going. I just don't like stupidity, and a lot of times, me, myself, too, you know, thinks we're nickel slick and can get over on people, and. Okay. You know. Fair enough. Steve, is there, is there anything else that you would like us to know? 
about you, about maybe um, your feeling on the upcoming, more than likely the upcoming um, chain of events, court, and so forth? No. His, his family? Did he ever talk about his family? Just uh, that night. Okay. And, you know, I, I'm, you know, I, I guess even though he did what he did, everybody's got somebody that loves him. You know, but when you do stuff like that, you know, you're not just affecting your family or yourself, you know. I don't really know all the details, but I mean, come on. Yeah. And obviously you didn't want to know the details. That's not something that, that happened. happened. That's what, what brought this whole thing about. Yeah, that's just, you know, I'm sorry to his family, you know. I'm not sorry for... You know, I'm sorry that they would have to feel any more pain. But I think it's best. Now he's gone, now they don't have to worry about him being in prison. Well, he was 67 years old, and if he got a minimum of 25 years, that was a life sentence. Mm -hmm. But think about it. At that age, getting 25 to life for CSC. I, I, that I, wasn't I, no normal CSC, yeah. so. Anything else? No, I'm all set. Okay, Steve, I certainly appreciate you uh, speaking with us. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've been very upfront, very honest, and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure, like you say, administratively here what they're going going to do. That's out of our, our mm -hmm. you know hands. Um, our next step is to put together the investigation, submit it to the prosecutor. The prosecutor will make a determination. Mm -hmm. It's fine. And we'll go from there. All right. All right. Anything else that you want to say? Nope. Sorry, I got to put you guys through this, but. Okay. Well, it's now 12 36. So we'll let you get back to whatever they're going to do with you. My cage, my world. All right. All right. Why don't you just sit there for a second? Let me All right, just call them. Talk here for just a quick second, if you don't mind. This will only take a minute. This is an oldest intent to classify your administration segregation. What's your name? Sanderson. Number? 167. This prisoner is under investigation by outside authorities and for suspected felonious behavior and is responsible. Reasonably believe that the prisoner needs to be segregated while the investigation is pending. So I hear them. Nope. You want to sign for your copy? Yeah. Can you go? There. Right here. I'm all done. Okay. This will be in your pocket. Yes, sir. You know, since this all happened, kind of been, people think I'm some kind of hero, well I'm actually not, um, I just, you know, did what I thought was best in the time that I was given, I don't know, I just, uh, I've been getting these emails saying that, you know, it's not my position to judge anybody, and I want to make it quite clear that I didn't judge him, you know, I know God is the only judge we have, I've just set the appointment up, so, I don't feel bad for what I did, you know. I feel bad for maybe the families, his family or something. But as far as remorse towards him, no. 